do apologize to the listeners and viewers sorry back live again so we will retake <coughs> on the uh, recitation of the holy quran Allah ke naam ke saath jo be intiha rahim karne wala bin maange dene wala aur baar baar rahim karne wala hai wal af zamane ki qasam innal insana lafi khus yaqinan insaan ek bade ghaate mein hai illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis سوائے ان لوگوں کے جو ایمان لائے اور نیک اعمال بجا لائے اور حق پر قائم رہتے ہوئے ایک دوسرے کو حق کی نصیحت کی اور صبر پر قائم رہتے ہوئے ایک دوسرے کو صبر کی نصیحت کی Can you come up? Mashallah, yes. Can you come up from here? Thank you to our listeners and viewers. I do apologize for the technical difficulties today. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll sort this out in the next program. Uh, just for the benefit of our members who are listening today, um, we are lined up with some guests in the studios today. We have some guests who have recently arrived in Masterton. Uh, there's a new settlement that has just happened recently with two brothers. There's another family that has recently arrived as well. At the same time, I do have um, one of our members that have traveled from Auckland as well. I uh, will uh, throw him some questions around uh, regarding our upcoming event. That's our uh, national convention that's due to happen in January. But the lineup for today's program is we are looking at the second coming of the Messiah, the concept about promised Messiah. So if I can let the viewers know today, who are the Ahmadiyya Muslim community? The Ahmadi Muslim community are Muslims who believe in the, in, the, in the Messiah or the second coming of Christ. We believe that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, he is from Qadian, India. He is the founder of the Ahmadiyya community in 1889. This is a revival movement within Islam, emphasizing its essential teaching of peace, love, justice, sanctity of life. Today, the Ahometnia community word spreads over under one divine appointed leader, His Holiness, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Almighty Allah be his helper. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community spends over 200 nations with members exceeding tens of millions. So on that, I would run a YouTube video. Again, this talks about the concept of the promised Messiah by Islam Ahmadiyya and then I will go into an interactive session today with our um, guests that are present in the studio today. Ya Aina Fayyudillahi Wal Arfani Yas'a ilayka al-khalq kal-gham ani Ya Bahra Fadul al-Mun'im al-Mannani تهبي إليك الزمر بالكيزاني. I've always been fascinated by the fact that even though people belong to many different faiths, yet there are things that are surprisingly common between all world religions. One thing that has always sparked my interest is that nearly all world religions speak of the advent of a Messiah in the latter days. If we look at the major world religions, like for example Christianity, most of them believe that Jesus Christ would be coming in these latter days and they believe also that uh, with the coming of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God will get nigh too. Hindus are waiting for their Krishna 
and Buddhists they are expecting the arrival of their Buddha. Muslims are waiting for their Mahdi and Messiah. Christians are waiting for Jesus Christ and uh, the Jews are also waiting for the same glory of their religion to come back which they earlier achieved during the time of David and Solomon, I mean Hazrat Dawud and the Hazrat Suleiman So this is a common factor which is found among all the religions. It always got me thinking that if a Messiah was to come for every religion, each bringing his own teachings all at the same time, that would definitely be a recipe for mass confusion all over the world, unless every religion was referring to the event of the one and the same person. Now that would definitely unite all faiths. Well, there are some similarities between the Christian and the non ahmadi Muslim concept of Jesus salam. That is to say, they both believe that Jesus salam is still alive and he ascended to heaven and he would return one day in order to unite the whole of mankind. But there is a prime difference between these two beliefs. The Christians, they believe that when Jesus Christ comes back, he will bring back the kingdom of God. So according to the Muslim, that kingdom of God will appear in this way, that those who are not Muslim, they will be killed and annihilated. Now, Muslim concept of Jesus alayhi salam, he doesn't forgive or he doesn't have any compassion. If you're not a Muslim, they think that you are dead. I'm not exaggerating, it's not exaggeration at all. These are all concepts prevailing in the Muslim society. If you are not a believer, if you are a disbeliever, then you are dead. And this is what actually orthodox Muslim believe and this is what is, what is commonly known to them. There is a saying of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he mentions that there will be a time when the Holy Quran will be so misinterpreted that Islam would have departed this earth to the farthest edges of the universe. And truly, to believe that a prophet of God has ascended to the heavens and will return only to massacre those who chose to believe different is an outrageous belief that could be attributed to the Holy Quran. कोई आसमां से न आएगा कोई खाक दां से न आएगा Nowhere in the Quran it is mentioned that Hazrat Isa a.s. physically went to the heaven and because his going is not mentioned that he went there it is also not mentioned that he will come back physically. To understand this thing, when we read Quran and also Ahadith, the concept of Masi and Mahdi is totally opposite to that what normally non Ahmadi Muslim believe. And this was actually the state of Muslims in the colonial British India, which somehow or the other became a kind of battleground for the religions, you know, because all of them were present there major world religions like Christians and Muslims and Hindus, all of them were active at the same time. And this was the state of the Muslims in the colonial British India, which was becoming a battleground for religious conversion. And unfortunately, the Muslims were the ones who were losing badly. With the East India Trading Company came a host of Christian missionaries hoping to convert the Indian population to Christianity. And a lot more followed as soon as India became a British colony. The Christian missionaries had a straightforward argument that, Nauzubillah, your prophet is dead. But as you believe, Jesus is still alive and he is the source of salvation for all mankind. Become Christians instead. And unfortunately, this was working really well for the Christian missionaries. <laughs> Due to the misinterpretation of the Holy Quran and Ahadith, Muslims in the subcontinent, they generally believed that Jesus is still alive and he has gone to heavens and he's going to come back. 
the Muslims believed that Jesus Christ will come back physically. So the Christian missionaries were able to convert the Muslims toward Christianity with the same argument that they believed uh, that Jesus Christ will come back. So it will be Jesus Christ who will bring back the kingdom of God and not the holy prophet of Islam. So this made the Muslims are doubtful about their religion. So therefore they were converted to Christianity in a large number. And if it were not for divine intervention, Islam would have been lost in that part of the world. If faith were to go up to the Pallades, a man from among the Persians would surely find it. Islam had indeed left this earth, and according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the Holy Quran, a Messiah and Mahdi indeed came to the salvation of Muslims. He came in the person of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu was salam. So this was the time for the coming of the Messiah. All the signs had appeared and it was Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam who truly defended the honor of the Holy Quran through divine guidance and indeed bring it back from the Pleiades. This was the time of the prominent Messiah alayhi salatu was salam, and all the signs were there. It was Hazrat Masih Ma'ud alayhi salatu was salam, whose advent took place and he was appointed by God and he did a lot of services to Islam. One of the biggest thing, one of the major thing, one of the unique thing the promised Messiah did, he corrected the ideology, the doctrine, the understanding of the verses of the Holy Quran and also of the verses of the Bible regarding the life and the death of Jesus, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The non-remedies, they always uh, use a verse of the Holy Quran and instead of giving the true meaning of that verse, they give the quite op opposite meaning of that verse. And that is uh, where Jesus Christ um, is reported to have said in the Holy Quran. And I was a witness over them as long as I remained among them. But since thou didst cause me to die, thou hast been the watcher over them, and thou art witness over all things. What actually is going on in this verse is that on the day of judgment, Allah Almighty is asking Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu about his performance, about his people. And he is simply replying in a very simple way that since I was among them, I was trying my level best. And when I was departed from them, I died. I was not responsible for them, but in fact, oh my beloved Allah, you were responsible for them. So this verse was used by the non-Ahmadi Muslims in order to um, prove the ascension of Jesus alayhi islam and they would interpret the word tawafi to mean th uh, to physically raise but this is completely unfounded this translation in this verse the word tawafaitan is actually misinterpreted by the non ahmadi muslims uh, they believe that tawafaitan here means that when you took me up or when you raised me up physically but Actually, this meaning is baseless. Here, this word means when you give me death, when you caused me to die. Because in many other parts of the Holy Quran, the word tawafaitani has come to mean in the meanings of, or, or, or it is taken as the meaning of the death. <laughs> Say, the angel of death will cause you to die. Even in this verse, the word Tawafi is used referring to the death. The promised Messiah -Islam, proved that Hazrat Isa -Islam, died a natural death. As well as this, he proved that all prophets before him also died a natural death. 
and not a single person before him had ever been given everlasting life. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ Muhammad is only a messenger. Verily, all messengers have passed away before him. If then he die or be slain, Will you turn back on your heels? We granted not everlasting life to any human being before thee. The promised Messiah والسلام, worked diligently to defend Islam and to rekindle the flame of faith that had been snubbed by ignorance. It is quite remarkable that a misinterpretation on the death of Jesus والسلام, could have such a profound effect on the faith that it nearly uprooted the very foundations of Islam. But it also had a hidden, more sinister and terrifying danger. The promised Messiah has said, a Jain or a Buddhist is afraid of and avoids killing even a mosquito or a flea. But alas, there are many among us Muslims who, while they kill an innocent man or commit wanton murder, are not afraid of the powerful God. The popular view of jihad prevalent among Muslims, that is, the expectation of a bloody Imam, full of spite and hostility for other people, is a texture of false beliefs inculcated by short-sighted ulama. This was what was actually stated by the promised Messiah a hundred years ago. And if you look around, this is what is happening exactly nowadays. No, he at that time he brought it into the notice of British government at that time that the doctrine, these mullahs, they are uh, uh, trying to instill into the minds of the innocent Muslims, especially their children that uh, a bloody Mahdi and Messiah will appear in this world and he will annihilate all the non-Muslims and will destroy those who are not prepared to accept Islam. As a matter of fact, these things, they, you know, they had polluted the minds of the innocent children right from the very beginning. And when these children, they grew up, it became their doctrine that uh, killing in the cause of, uh, killing the innocent people, even though uh, it may be for the religion, it is a very meritorious deed and by doing this they will be going to the paradise. And they are the major reason for destruction and they are the killer of peace from the world today. Muslims are taught right from the beginning, right from the youth of a Messiah who would come one day and he would bathe the world in the blood of disbelievers. And when this teaching manifests itself within these youth, as they grow older, one day they become ready in order to take the lives of innocent women and children and they think this is the service of Islam. So we must thank Allah the Almighty that He has allowed us to accept the promised Messiah salam, and in this manner He saved us from this grave sin. The promised Messiah salam's service to humanity and Islam is staggering. But here is just one example of his many services to Islam by showing us the true interpretation of Jesus The promised Messiah saved the Muslims from doing shirk or association with God. The promised Messiah saved the Muslims from this false belief which is also blasphemous to believe that Jesus who is an Israelite prophet he would come back to save the Ummah 
of the Holy Prophet وسلم, who is also the seal of all the Prophets. We call ourselves Muslims and we must look at the meaning of Islam and Islam means peace and submission to the will of Allah. So this is exactly what we practice. We try and win the hearts of people through peaceful means, through peaceful words. Uh, we must be very grateful to the Prophet Muhammad who gave us this teaching of living in peace with the rest of the world. And this is what we are born for, that we should spread peace through our own peaceful actions. And our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is a messenger of peace. The Khulafa of Hazrat Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. He gave us this idea that there is one motto that we have to follow, which is unmatchable, that is love for all, hatred for none. There are still some questions, aren't there? If Jesus Salam, did not die on the cross and he was not raised to the heavens, then where did he go? What happened to him? Did he fulfill his mission? To find out all of that and much, much more, read this book, Jesus in India, by the promised Messiah alayhi salatu was salam. Jo chala gaya koi aur hai Welcome back to our listeners and viewers. Just to uh, get back into the program today, as I've highlighted earlier, we will be talking to some guests in the studio today. So with that, I would like to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to Anjum Sahib. Anjum Sahib, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Jazakallah Anjum Sahib, aaj aapne hamari studio mein aaye aur kuch choti si baatein puchhenge aapse. Aapki jo safar hui Pakistan se Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka se New Zealand. To pehli question to ye hai aap Urdu mein keh sakte hain, main baad mein English mein translate kar dunga. Aap bataye aapki paidaish Pakistan किस है किस फैमिली थोड़ा सा कुछ अपने बारे में कुछ बता दें मैं स्टूडियो में मेरी फैमिली इंडिया से इज्जत करके पाकिस्तान गुजरावाला में शिफ्ट हुई थी वहाँ से मेरी पदाश गुजरावाला की है सन 1974 तो बाकी उसके बाद थोड़ा सा सा वहाँ पे तीन चार साल हुए हैं या पांच साल हुए हैं रबा शिफ्ट हो गए तो जैसे हमें पता है अंजुम साहब कि हमारे अहमदीय भाई के ऊपर इतनी मुखालफत जो पाकिस्तान में होती है अगर आप वो देखें जो किस तरह से लोग फ्रीली नमाज नहीं पढ़ सकते अजान नहीं दे सकते तो आप बताएं ऐसा क्या हुआ क्या झटका आपको लगा कि आपको अब ऐसा फील हुआ कि अब मुझे पाकिस्तान से निकलना है दरअसल हमें सन उन्नीस सौ चौहत्तर में और उसके बाद चार दफ़ा हम पे हमला हुआ है दो हज़ार चौदह में आखिरी हमला हुआ है जिसमें हमारी चार शहादतें हुई हैं जिसमें एक मेरे भाई की बीवी थी और भाई की बीवी के एक बेटे के दो बच्चियां थी एक बच्ची की एक बच्ची थी जो अभी नौ माह की पेट में थी वो दो हज़ार जुलाई दो में शहीद हुई हैं उस वजह से फिर हमें मजबूर हिजत करनी पड़ी है Jazakallah. Uh, just to uh, translate what Anjum Saab has just uh, spoken about. So he's from Gujrawala. There's a place in the district in uh, Pakistan. So basically he was born there, raised there, and then later he moved to Rabwa. Rabwa is where the Ahmadiyya Muslim community headquarters used to be. That's where the whole process of uh, the caliphate that started in Islam, uh, that uh, that's where it transpired from. And later the headquarters uh, moved to uh, UK and London where it is uh, currently based. Um, as you all know, and this is something quite important for the people of Wararapa to realize that Pakistan does not allow or the Pakistan government does not allow the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to freely practice their religion. And this is one of the fundamental reasons why Anjum has left. He had situations where uh, some of his family members were martyred um, in, in Pakistan and that led him to leave Pakistan and make the journey to Sri Lanka. तो अंजुम साहब आपकी श्रीलंका जब हिजरत हुई तो चार साल आप वहाँ गुजारे तो उसके बारे में थोड़ा सा कुछ बता दें 
जी मैं यकन जनवरी 2020 को श्रीलंका आया था श्रीलंका के बाद फिर चार साल वहाँ पे रहा हूँ मेरा फिर वहाँ से यू की तरफ से केस पास हुआ उसके बाद फिर मैं न्यूजीलैंड न्यूजीलैंड आया न्यूजीलैंड से अब मैं मास्टर में हूँ Jazakallah. So, just to add a um, bit of a commentary to our to our vis- uh, listeners and viewers, uh, yep, Anjum Saab spent about four years in Sri Lanka. Um, tough journey, but finally, um, his uh, I guess the application for approval to move as a refugee to coming to New Zealand that was all granted. So now he's in the beautiful land of Aotearoa. He's come and settled in Marston. His actually expertise is in butchery side. So I'm. opening up to whoever's listening here please do uh, come forward as you know uh, we are open to take public opinion public help whatever way possible to make the refugees uh, stay uh, so that they can assimilate in the society quite seamlessly uh, with that uh, thank you i will move on to our next guest uh, we have uh, ijaz khan sab who has traveled from auckland He's no stranger to New Zealand. I've uh, been in this country for many years and he's one of our um, auxiliary members up in Auckland. So, Ijaz, uh, just a quick question around our new annual, sorry, our annual convention for 2024 is coming soon in January. So, can you just uh, quickly touch on your roles and responsibility during this time? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Tafik Saab. Uh, yes, so our annual, annual convention is starting um, on the 19th and 20th January 2024. Um, preparation will be starting around uh, 16th uh, and that takes about two, three days for everything to get set up. The venue is in um, uh, Elfriston College, which is 550 Porchester Road in Elfriston. Uh, everyone is openly invited as well um, uh, to that program, uh, especially on that Saturday. There is a special guest program uh, happening uh, before lunch, uh, hour before lunch, and then obviously there is lunch provided as well. Uh, my main role is um, basically audio video. Um, set up all the audio transmission, uh, live stream on YouTube, um, and the the place uh, um, uh, the 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 centre, the Elfriston College, where we set up. Uh, there's two two halls, um, uh, one for men's side, one for ladies' side. So it is quite a long, long distance. So it it takes uh, uh, some some work to. Uh, set up, um, so that takes about two two days, and then but uh, we'll, with the team, um, it gets uh, done before the program starts. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, speakers, mics, cameras, uh, um, linking the two halls uh, for men's and ladies uh, to set up and have the program run. smoothly um so that's that's the problem. no thank you ijaz i can uh, absolutely imagine uh, the amount of workload the amount of manpower required to do this i have been part of some conventions in the past and i can truly appreciate how much work it does go in uh, just to let our members know the ahmedia muslim convention it started almost um, look hundreds of years ago when the promised messiah mahadi who started the first convention with only 75 people that was the first ever convention where people attended this in india in kadian that was the first ever convention that happened today if we look at our head office in uk i think in if i correctly say jazz we get up to close to 40000 members attending those conventions these days close yes, to yes uh, this year in uh, uk uh, in world convention there was close to 40000 yeah uh, members attending so great so is is ijaz is alluded to um, this is not a ordinary convention this is a convention which is you know filled with a lot of spiritual with a lot of blessing and he has just mentioned it's open to everyone so i'm absolutely requesting to the people of wararapa you can get in touch with me i'm the local president here of the ahmedia muslim community um on 02753656564 or you know our center here at aero fm building please come up to level 1 
you've got my contact details please feel free to get in touch with me if you're planning to be part of this convention up in Auckland so just moving forward with our program today um, I'll probably go back to Anjum Sab Anjum Sab आप से कुछ और थोड़ा सा सवालात मैं पूछता हूँ अब जैसे इजाज़ खान साहब ने जलसा के हवाले से कुछ बताया हमें तो आपकी क्या एक्सपीरियंस है आपने कोई जलसा वगैरह अपने दिनों में अटेंड किया कोई आपकी कभी ड्यूटी लगी आप कुछ हव, उस हवाले से बता सकते हो जी मैं 2004 में और पाँच में ड्यूटी पे गया हूँ कादियान गया हूँ उससे पहले तो पाकिस्तान में नहीं जब जलसे हुए इतना पता लेकिन वहाँ पे मैं बुछड़ी के सिलसिले में काम पे गया था वहाँ पे काम करने का तो समझने के इतना मज़ा आता है जमाती कि आप सोच भी नहीं सकते और वहाँ पे दो साल जाके काम किया है तो अल्लाह के फजल से बड़ा मज़ा आया है तो अगर आप देखिए जब आप उस टीम में काम करते हो अपने जो भी आपके कारकुनान हैं आपके साथ जो आपके हेड हैं वो जो बेशुमार जो हम ब्लेसिंग की बात करते हैं जो माहौल वहाँ है कुछ माहौल का बारे में कुछ बताएं अंजुन साहब कैसा फीलिंग रहता है अगर आप आपने कादियान का नाम लिया जो हमारी एक जड़ है जो वहाँ से मसीह आते हैं वो क्या फीलिंग है फीलिंग तो बहुत अच्छी है वहाँ पे काम करने लेकिन जमाती काम कोई भी काम पे कहीं पे भी करने का मज़ा एक अलग ही है बड़ी खुशी महसूस होती है कि एक तो ये होता है कि सुबह से लेकर अगर चौबीस घंटे भी काम करते रहें पता नहीं चलता टाइम कैसे गुजरता है और ये भी नहीं महसूस होता है कि कभी आपको थकावट हुई है लेकिन अल्लाह के फजल से बड़ा ही अच्छा और बड़ा ही मज़ा आता है जमाती काम करने का वो बड़ा अच्छा रहता है जजाक अंजुम साहब जस्ट टू लेट आर व्यू इज नो आई कैन इंटरप्रेट वट अंजुम साहब इफ जस्ट सेड ही डिड ऑल्सो हैव एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वर्क इन दिस एनुअल कन्वेंशन एंड दिस इज इन कादियान इंडिया वे आर द प्रोमिस मसाल सलाम कम्स फ्राम दिस इज एक्चुअली अ ग्रेट टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन टूडे बिकॉज वी चोज द सेकेंड कमिंग ऑफ द मसाया एंड इन आर टॉपिक इज स्पॉट ऑन सो ही स्पोक अबाउट हिज ड्यूटी इन द बुचरी सेक्शन दैट ओवरवेलमिंग फीलिंग इन साइड द ब्लेसिंग यू गेट द टाइप ऑफ पीपल यू वर्क अराउंड सो इट्स वेरी स्परिचुअल इट्स अ वेरी स्परिचुअल एटमोसफियर it gives people a lot of strength it gives people a lot of sanity and uh, i guess a lot of uh, satisfaction as well so what anjum has just alluded to is that no matter where in the world you are by doing work for your um, community it gives you an inner peace and satisfaction so that's why in this role as me as a leader here in maston is all the um, guests in the studio they are all volunteers of the ahmadiyya muslim community we don't get to pay get paid to do this job but we do this from our own will to seek the blessing of almighty god we do this for the service of human mankind that's what our caliph uh, time and time reminds us of and then the four most important piece that we need to getting to win the pleasure of god almighty god so the human creation is this two things that the human creation tells us to worship god do not associate any partners with him secondly save human mankind that's why if you look at the ahmed muslim community we have our logo love for all hatred for none so my request to all the members out there come talk to us if you have any burning question re- relating to today's program which i've touched on on the second coming of the of jesus christ we believe he died a natural death we believe his body was properly buried in um, srinagar in kashmir we are happy to have this conversation with you with proof and i'm open to any public person to come in and having this dis- discussion with me again like i said you can reach me on my number o27536565 you can email us on info@ahmadia.org.nz or you can call us on 0800 letter y islam with that we'll uh, we've got a short uh, pause in the program we will listen to a beautiful um, a poem that's for next 5 minutes it's called a qasida that will be in praise of the holy prophet muhammad the holy founder of our islam वो कसीदा मैं करूं वस्फ मसीहा मेरा कम 
वो कसीदा मैं करूं वस्व मसीहा मेरा कम फख्र समझे जिसे लिखना भी मेरे दस्त कलम वो कसीदा मैं करूं वस्व मसीहा मेरा कम जान है सारे जहां की वो शहे वाला जा जान है सारे जहां की वो शहे वाला जा मंबाए जो दो सखा है वो मेरा अब रे करम मंबाए जो दो सखा है वो मेरा अब रे करम ताज एक बाल का सर पर है मुजयन तेरे ताज एक बाल का सर पर है मुजयन तेरे नुसरतो फत का उड़ता है हवा में परचम नुसरतो फत का उड़ता है हवा में परचम माल क्या चीज है और की हकीकत क्या है माल क्या चीज है और की हकीकत क्या है अब रू तुझ पे फिदा कर ने को तैयार है हम अब रू तुझ पे फिदा कर ने को तैयार है हम वो कसीदा मैं करूं बस मसीहा मेरा कम शान शौकत को तेरी देख के हसा दो शरीर शान शौकत को तेरी देख के हसा दो शरीर खून दिल पीते हैं और खाते हैं वो गो गम खून दिल पीते हैं और खाते हैं वो गो गम पर तेरी पुष्ट पे वो है जिसे कहते हैं खुदा पर तेरी पुष्ट पे वो है जिसे कहते हैं खुदा 
जिसके आगे है मलाइक कभी होता सर खम जिसके आगे है मलाइक कभी होता सर खम वो कसीदा मैं करूँ वे मसीहा मेरा कम अपने वादे के मुताबिक तुझे भेजा उसने अपने वादे के मुताबिक तुझे भेजा उसने उम्मत खैर रसुल पर है किया उसने करम उम्मत खैर रसुल पर है किया उसने करम तेरे हाथों से ही दाल की टूटेगी कमर तेरे हाथों से ही दाल की टूटेगी कमल शिरक के हाथ तेरे हाथ से ही होवेंगे कलम शिरक के हाथ तेरे हाथ से ही होवेंगे कलम तेरी सच्चाई का दुनिया में बजेगा डंका तेरी सच्चाई का दुनिया में बजेगा डंका बादशाह के तेरे सामने होंगे सर खम बादशाह के तेरे सामने होंगे सर खम इल्तजा है हशर के रोज तू महमूद का बनियो हम दम हशर के रोज तू महमूद का बनियो हम दम जाहे मेरी आखिर में ये प्यार मसीह हशर के रोज तू महमूद का बनियो हम दम Thank you to our listeners and viewers. It was a beautiful poem in praise for our 
Holy Prophet, Holy Messiah that I have spoken to you initially. Uh, we do have one more person in the studio and I do apologize. Um, he is our Propagation Secretary for uh, Masterton. I will get uh, Mr. Shokat Ali Bajoga Sahib to come forward on this part so that I can see him on the mic. Shokat Sahib, aap kuch tabliq ki hawale se kuch bata de aapka next two days mein kya plan hai tabliq ki hawale se. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mera naam Shokat Ali Majoka hai. To mein Master Tanjimaat se hoon tabliq ka kaam kar raha hoon. तो नेक्स्ट कल हमारा संडे को बुक स्टॉल लगाना है हमने संडे बाजार जो मास्टर टेन में लगता है तो इन इसमें अंसार और कुछ खुदाम शिरकत कर रहे हैं तो एवरी फोर नाइटली हम लगाते हैं बुक स्टॉल यहाँ पे मास्टर टेन के अंदर और फ्री बुक्स देते हैं जो कि कोई भी इंटरेस्टेड हो और स्टडी करे और जमात को और जमात अहमदिया को बुक्स की स्टडी करना चाहे तो वो ले जाते हैं शौकत भाई जस्ट कुछ क्वेश्चन आपसे मैं जाहिर कर लूँ कि ये जो तबलीग का जो आपको पोर्टफोलियो मिला हुआ है जो अभी आपने बुक स्टोर की बात की और ये जो पेम्फलेट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है तो आप क्या मिस यूज़ कर रहे हैं आपका क्या इसमें कुछ आप कुछ ऐड कर सकते हो कि आप हाउ डू यू फील अबाउट डूइंग ऑल दिस वर्क फॉर जमा नहीं हमें बहुत खुशी होती है और ये काम करने से और तसली भी होती है और खुदा तला को राज़ी करने के लिए ये काम करते हैं और अपना पैगाम अपने मैसेज पहुँचाने के लिए पूरी दुनिया में कि जैसे हमारा एक जमात का माटो है लफ और लाल हिटर फरनान तो वो मैसेज पहुँचाने के लिए ये हम काम करते हैं और फीस भी लीला करते हैं बगैर तनख्वाह के करते हैं और बड़ी मेहनत और लगन से काम करते हैं और हर एक जमात एम डी ए का हर फर्द ये काम करता है और बगैर किसी तनख्वाह के करता है जजाकल्ला शौकत भाई अगेन जस्ट फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ आवर एंड व्यूअर्स शौकत हैज़ बीन इन मास्टर फॉर जस्ट ओवर वन एंड हाफ ईयर्स नाउ इन माशा ही सेटल इन वेल हीज बिन टेकिंग द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रोपोगेशन वर्क दैट ही डज फॉर द अहमद कमेटीड टू we don't we don't get paid for this but the satisfaction is seeking the pleasure of almighty god and and spreading the message of love and peace um in the wararapa region so with that thank jazakallah shukran bhai thank you so much uh, bhai bas uh, we coming to the end of our program to jazakallah anjum sahab jazakallah ijaz sahab for uh, joining me in the studios today uh, may god bless you for giving your time today and again just uh, on the end i would like to thank uh, aero fm michael and his team for giving us the opportunity every saturday to be part of uh, wararapa tv uh, spreading the word of uh, we are one um, promoting the message of peace to the beautiful people of wararapa again if anyone has any questions relating to today's program you more than welcome to contact me i'm tashrik hanif the local president of the ahmedia muslim community here in masterton um i'm on 02753656564 or you can get me on info at ahmedia.org.nz or our toll free number 0800 y letter y islam i s l a m With that I wish all viewers and listeners a pleasant weekend be safe uh, be happy and till we meet again next Saturday kakite assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh